25 years ago this week, then-Senator Joe Biden gave a speech in Warsaw, Poland. He said in part, now it is time for the people of Western Europe to invest in the security of their continent for the next century. The president's address today in Warsaw hit remarkably similar themes. I came to Europe again this week with a clear and determined message for NATO, for the G7, for the European Union, for all freedom-loving nations. We must commit now to be in this fight for the long haul. We must remain unified today and tomorrow and the day after and for the years and decades to come. Joining me now, Bill Taylor, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, and Emily Harding, senior fellow and deputy director of the International Security Program at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Welcome to you both. Ambassador Taylor, let's start with you um, in this. What was your reaction uh, to the president's speech today? Because you have a particular unique view in this, in this kind of moment. Thank you, Michael. Um, I was very impressed. I thought President Biden gave a powerful speech. He clearly meant it. He felt it. There was a lot of emotion there, a lot of urgency there. He made the case for the long term that we're going to be in this for a while, but he also made the case for right now. Um, he, and, and he addressed the Ukrainians. Um, he addressed the Europeans. Uh, he addressed the Russian people. He addressed the issues of the minute and of the hour and of the next month and year. He, that, I thought that was a very powerful speech that he gave today. So, so Emily, what struck me uh, about the speech was 25 years ago, then Senator Biden was clear that it was Europe's responsibility to defend itself. Now he finds himself trying to walk that line between supporting Ukraine and keeping the U.S. out of the, uh, you know, an act of war with Russia. What do you think of that approach, and does it work? I think, in general, good things happen when America leads, and that was his message on this trip. He was trying to say that we are unified as NATO, we are unified as Europeans and friends of Europe, and most importantly, we're unified as democracies. He really painted this as a struggle between the future of authoritarianism and the future of democracy, and tried to say that the democracies were going to win because, as he put it, right makes Right makes might right. He was talking about how we were in the right as democracies, and so he was flipping that phrase on its head. And I thought that was a very powerful line. In addition, the way that he spoke directly to the Polish people and used some symbology that was really important to Poland, I thought that was a quite impressive way to go about it. Bill, the, the president's putting a lot of energy uh, to Emily's point about, you know, pressing the point to the Polish people um, and, and having that sort of uh, rebound uh, to the Ukrainian people. Do you anticipate a more active role for the United States uh, in, as this conflict moves on? So I think uh, the United States is already playing a very active role. I mean, the United States has stepped up to lead this coalition. As Emily just said, it's a broad coalition. It's not just in Europe. It's around the world. It's a, it's a coalition that is put on sanctions. Um, and the requirement for sanctions to be effective is that they are put on by a range of nations around the world. So I think the United States is, is leading that. It's, a, it's been a major, a major diplomatic effort. I mean, it's a, a diplomatic surge, General Luke talks about, General Doug Luke talks about a diplomatic surge. He's never seen, I've never seen a, a sustained, consistent, strong, broad effort on the part of diplomats uh, to bring all the nations around. So, yeah, I think the United States has stepped up. It's probably surprised President Putin. It's probably surprised President Xi who's undoubtedly watching this. So I, I think this leadership, United States leadership, is, is something that we're going to be proud of. Emily, the ambassador raises an interesting point because there are some sticky parts to all of that, and it certainly is uh, no doubt sticky with the commitment of the U.S. to hosting up to 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. In addition, to billions of dollars in humanitarian uh, food aid, humanitarian and food aid. Uh, how do you think that plays, and is that going to be enough, or are we looking at a possibility of, oh, another 100,000 later on? 
Oh, I think we're absolutely looking at the possibility of another, another 100,000 later on. I mean, if you think about just the size of Ukraine and the number of people who have already fled, I mean, Poland's already hosting upwards of 2 million refugees. Other nations on Ukraine's border are also hosting, you know, just as many. I think there are more to come, especially following the, the bombings today in Lviv. You're probably going to see more people trying to get out of the country, and, and they, they probably should go. And we need to open our doors to those people. I think 100,000 is, is the first draw in what I'm hoping is a very big bucket, and we'll invite in many more. So, Bill, as you know, Ukraine uh, has loomed large in U.S. Uh, foreign policy even before this particular invasion. Um, it, that, Nate, that relationship that we have with Ukraine, uh, but its role also not being a part of NATO, what's your outlook on the state of the U.S.-Ukraine uh, relationship going forward? So, Michael, I think that this is a, a right, the right question uh, to ask, and that is, how does how do we interact? How what what is our role in Ukraine going forward? President Zelensky has decided has has figured out that uh, NATO is not going to be the agency, the entity, the treaty that is going to provide his security. He thought that NATO was going to be the answer. He wants security for his people, for his country, for his nation not going to be NATO, he's decided, at least not now. So he's looking for other ways to secure his country. And he's looking at other models. One model, Michael, is what the Austrians have. They are not in NATO. They are in the EU. They are not a member of any defensive organization, alliance. But they are, are they need, and Ukraine needs, and this gets to your question, you need, Ukraine needs assurances, security guarantees that if they adopt a neutral status like Austria, that they won't be invaded again. And they've had some bad experience with this kind of an assurance before. It needs to be stronger than that. So the United States needs to think about how it can guarantee Ukraine's security going forward. 